wanted to start my talk today with a bit of a news hit. You're not quite getting the exclusive on this piece of news, but I did want to share with you all and reveal for the first time publicly that I'm having a baby. Thank you. I have another photo here, as you can see. I'm not blessed with long, slim legs, but I made the strategic decision to marry someone who was, and it appears that decision has just uh, <laughs> paid off. <laughs> But we're not going to sit here and talk about my ultrasound all day, thank God. But there is a reason that I wanted to share that with you all. And that's because it directly relates to what I want to speak about today. Because I want to know whether this baby growing inside of me will ever one day grow up to watch the TV news. And if, down the track, I tell him or her that mummy used to be a TV news reporter, whether he or she will even know what that is. Because everyone keeps telling me that TV news is dying, that we're in a race to the bottom, scrambling to work out what to do, yet knowing the inevitable is coming. And from what I've seen over the last couple of years, you'd have to say the signs of extinction are there. The job losses, the redundancies, the changes in the last couple of been, years have been enormous. And if you spoke to any number of journalists out on the road right now, I'm sure many of them agree that in many ways the writing is on the wall. So here's what I think. I do think that in some ways, TV news is dying. And I think in most cases, it's the TV newsrooms that are killing themselves. And I'll go into how they're doing that in a moment, but the first and central point that I want to make today is this, that TV news can and will survive. There will always be a place for it in people's homes and lives. Yes, there'll be endless digital platforms popping up and they'll continue to exist. But there's something magical about coming home at night and seeing with your own two eyes the day's news on the telly, especially on a big news day. And there's something magical about being in a TV newsroom when news is breaking and everyone around you clicks into gear. There's something magical about that. But as I said, I think a number of TV newsrooms have lost much of their magic. And I want to talk today about how we get that back. And this is how today's theme of empowerment fits in. You see, when you actually think about it, the very nature of the TV news exchange is one of empowerment. Viewers tune in to be empowered, to be more informed to get more up to date so that they can make better decisions in their world. That's the essence of it. That's the essence of what we do. But we have a situation at the moment where a number of newsrooms think, the more scared we make you feel, the more hopeless we make you feel, the more fragile we make you feel, the more you'll want to watch. And that's in my mind how TV newsrooms will secure their own extinction. So let me give you a couple of examples of how this happens. A little while ago, the newsroom I was working for at the time sent me out to a small Jewish school in Bondi that was building a big, concrete, bomb-proof wall out the front of the school. It was a legitimate news story, a sign of the times. So I head out there and got shots of the wall and the construction workers and a couple of rabbis, got a couple of interviews with them on camera and I emailed back to the office to let them know what I'd got. And the message came back saying, great stuff, it goes with the increased terror threat. So this was the day before Australia's terror alert level was lifted from medium to high. And so I wrote back and I said, absolutely, I agree, context is important. But we have to remember here that this school, along with state schools, private schools, Islamic schools, Catholic schools, had all been granted funding under this federal government program for security in schools. And that that funding had been granted a number of years prior. And the message came back, no one cares, they're scared now, so they're building it now. And so began one of the worst days I've ever experienced as a news reporter. The same newsroom a little while ago also sent me out to a, a story about a big Aussie barbecue that was being put on by Sydney's Muslim community. So it was a really positive move by a community that often cops a lot of negative coverage. And as I was 
heading out there, I got a call from my producer saying, oh, look, there's been a bomb scare at a shopping centre nearby. And I said, well, oh, that sounds a bit scary. It doesn't sound great. Maybe I should go there instead. And she said, well, look, the police aren't that worried about it. So maybe give them a call, find out what's going on, and then we'll make a decision. So I called the police, and sure enough, they weren't worried about it at all. They said, it's a hoax. It's over. There'd been a couple of kids making out inside a change room. They'd got caught. And in the process of being asked to leave, had left a note, which sparked the whole scare. So I, called, <laughs> so I called my office back and said, look, this is not a story and I think we should leave it. How about I head back to the Muslim barbecue? And she said, look, we've had a direction from someone senior in the newsroom and it's this. What they want you to do is combine the two stories. So start the story with the bomb scare, the hoax, that had nothing to do with Muslims and combine it with the Muslims trying to overcome negative media publicity. <laughs> and you can imagine how disturbed I was. So this, these examples bring me to my first point about where I think a number of TV newsrooms are coming undone. Now, while all of them often do a great job and make some great TV and tell some great stories, I think the number one mistake that many of them make is to underestimate their viewers. They operate on the assumption that you as viewers are unable to process any slightly complex storyline beyond the realms of good versus evil, and they operate on the assumption that generally you're not that interested anyway. And I think it's a terrible mistake. I know that not everyone's intellectual and I know that not everyone's academic, but having worked in a bunch of different newsrooms across the country, I feel like I'm a little bit in touch with everyday Australians, and let me tell you, they have minds, they have opinions, they have life experiences and they care deeply about their families and this country. And they know when you're unnecessarily pumping up a story and they know when you're trying to scare them to death. And treating them like that won't win their trust or respect. And yet they are the very two commodities a newsroom trades on, trust and respect. Yet how can you expect someone to trust and respect you if you don't even respect them or their intelligence? Another way I think a number of newsrooms are letting themselves down is this sad obsession with petty crime. You may have noticed in the last little while, a number of bulletins have extended their nightly bulletins from half an hour to an hour, often using similar number of resources to generate double the content. And what's more, the competition from digital services has pushed TV to a much more live and local format because live and local plays to TV strengths. No one else has the ability to go live at night like TV does or live at any time of day like TV does. And also there's this push for localization. You see, TV newsrooms have the resources and the spread to be able to cover Sydney and show you what's going on in your backyard. And when you see your suburb or you hear your local area on the news, naturally, your interest picks up. So we have a situation where newsrooms now are turning to petty crime to fill their bulletins up. Because petty crime fits the bill. It's easy to show, it's easy to tell, it's really localised and it's cheap to make. It fits that easy to understand formula that you, the viewer, uh, will be able to take in because generally there's a goodie, a baddie, and some pictures of violence. And as I said, it's cheap to make. Most of the time the incident itself is captured on someone's mobile phone or CCTV, so they haven't had to pay a cameraman to go and shoot all of this. And then they might send out a junior news reporter, junior-ish reporter, early in the morning to round all this up so that by the end of the day what you've got is a story that's very localised, a little bit entertaining, a little bit shocking, but most importantly makes you really afraid of where you live. Sure, there are some new stories that are shocking, that do play on your fears. That's the nature of news, and those stories deserve to be told and deserve to be told well. But when a story involves very little meaning and a whole lot of effort trying to shock and scare your viewers, it's not worth running. 
Another way I think a number of newsrooms are letting themselves down is sticking to what they know too much and being afraid to leave this formulaic approach that we've developed. And it dawned on me recently just how stuck we are to our formulas when I headed out to a school in Sydney. The story was the school principal had sent a letter home to the parents of years fives and sixes telling them that at that age it probably wasn't a good idea to have boyfriends and girlfriends. And for the newsroom that I was in at the time, this was the perfect fodder for their bulletin, so I headed out and asked for the principal. He wasn't happy to see me, but we did manage to tell the story in a fair and balanced way that made us both happy. But something he said to me on that day, as he was taking me through the school, really stuck with me. He said, why is it, when it comes to education, that you guys are only ever interested in stories like this? Boyfriends and girlfriends when we've got so much more interesting stuff going on here inside this school. And he was so right. When it comes to education in TV news, we generally like to stick to NAPLAN testing. We love that. Happens at the same time every year. HSC Top Achievers happens at the same time every year. We love a school formal story. They happen at the same time every year. Uh, boyfriends and girlfriends and maybe the occasional knit outbreak. And another type of story that fits this formulaic approach are weather stories. Have you noticed recently that TV newsrooms have taken weather stories to a whole new level? <laughs> because you see, nat like big fires, uh, snow in weird places, floods, cyclones naturally make great TV. They're really important to tell because they directly relate to people's safety. But also the pictures are captivating. Have you ever caught yourself staring into an open fireplace, the flames flickering? Well, watching fires on telly is a little bit like that, and news directors know it. But what we have now is a situation where if it rains for a few days, or if it rains a bit hard, or if it's hot for a few days in a row, we make that news. And I, I watched a bulletin recently where the lead story that night was that Sydney Siders had had an uncomfortable day because of the rain, an uncomfortable day. And they showed us pictures of people with umbrellas and water on the roads and people in traffic jams, all the things that happen when it rains in a big city. <laughs> what this is, is just another example of this live and local push, a grab for ratings in certain suburbs and a chance for TV newsrooms to show you what's going on in your own backyard, even if there's not that much going on in your own backyard. Now, having taken in everything I've just said, here's the problem with all of it. You see, there are TV newsrooms that do all these things that I've just described as problematic, and yet they still enjoy rating success. Are people watching because they just always have? Are people watching because they like the content and most of the time the newsroom does a good job? Are they watching because they like the newsreader? Are they watching because they like the game show that comes before the news and they just leave their TV sets on? And importantly, can those ratings be sustained through generational change? All those questions require a whole other TEDx talk. But the question I have to ask is this. Is it OK that viewers tune in? Is it OK that TV newsrooms do these things? And is it a situation that we should be happy about? My personal view is it's not a situation that we should be happy about. Because we as a people should be encouraged to care about more than what's just going on in our own backyard. We should be encouraged to think beyond the realms of good versus evil, right versus wrong. And we should be able to feel beyond the scope of outrage, anger and fear. Not just for our own benefit, but for the benefit of all of us as a community. And here's the beauty of the situation. You see, there are different news services out there, and you, as viewers, actually have all the power. So if you don't like what you're getting, and you don't like the way you're being treated, then switch over. And TV newsrooms will get the message, because they live and die by ratings. And they have ratings minute by minute that tell them who's tuning in and who's tuning out at any given story. So if you start demanding the news that you deserve, 
TV newsrooms will get the message and hopefully they'll start to lift their game. And this brings me back again to the very nature of the TV news exchange. It's one of empowerment. Viewers tune in to be empowered, to get smarter, to get more informed, to get up to date, to feel more connected so that they have the knowledge and the power to make better decisions for themselves and live a more fulfilling life. They don't tune in hoping you're going to scare them to death. They don't tune in hoping that you're going to make them more worried about the violence in their suburbs or more worried about the nasty criminal that doesn't pay for a train ticket. (laughs) And yet TV newsrooms are dishing this up to their own detriment. Sadly, I think a number of TV newsrooms have been swept up in this digital age, worried that you can now go to so many different places for your news. But what TV newsrooms must never forget is that they can offer so much more than clickable fodder. There will always be a need for gripping visual storytelling. There will always be a need for TV news as long as the viewers feel like there's something in it for them, a feeling of empowerment. So the minute TV newsrooms stop trying to make the world more scared, more fragile, more hopeless or more on edge and start treating their viewers with respect and start making bold decisions that steer away from a formulaic approach. What you'll see is viewers tuning in on any screen that they can find. And it's at that point you'll discover you've developed a team of empowered journalists delivering the news for a population of empowered people that hopefully one day might include this one. Thank you very much.